Hey, this is Arcade and Pinball Talk. Today we're doing an exclusive interview with Dirty Donnie with Cosmic Carnival and Suncoast Pinball. Thank you again for joining us today. I know you've been a busy man with a lot of expos going on and just kind of getting the name out there. Uh, but anyway, tell us a little bit more about what's going on with Cosmic Carnival. What, what, what's going on in Donnie's life right now? Well, thanks for having me. Um, I've been uh, traveling a lot, and we just finished Cosmic Carnival a little while ago. I, I finished the artwork on it, and um, the game is almost ready to to, to launch out the doors. Um, and uh, you know, aside from that, just you know, being busy, we moved to this house last year in, in Palm Desert from uh, from the Bay Area. So it's between work, it's like I'm constantly setting up, you know, stuff and. Pretty much got my studio. Uh, uh, I would say it's about seventy percent done, and uh, you know it's a working shop right now. Got two little shop. Got a little shop, and then the studio room. And I got a hand and carbonite uh, hung about two weeks ago. So he's got a home now. That's a beautiful uh, piece you got going. Right there. Happy about it, but yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, Donning Land has just been busy land, and um, kind of looking forward to. I took a little tiny bit of time off. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping back into the, the workload. So. I'm a little tired. I just did the uh, the Golden State Pinball um, this weekend, and that was amazing. But we just got back, and we're 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 pretty tired. I got a little bit of a cold, so excuse my uh, excuse my voice. No, absolutely. Yeah, I know there was a lot of people that showed up to that expo out there this this weekend. I know you were there for pretty much the whole time, right? Friday all the way through Sunday. Yeah, we we arrived Thursday, and we were uh, we got home like late Sunday night. So I'm still recovering, even though it's Wednesday. Understandable. Well, uh, tell us a little bit more about, you know, about Dirty Donnie. I mean, obviously, a lot of people know you from a lot of the art that you've done. Uh, tell us a little bit more about where people are going to know you from as far as the works that you've done, who your collaborations have been with, as well as the companies that you've worked for. Well, um, I started out in Ottawa, Canada doing, um, this would be in the mid-90s, doing uh, chalkboards and, and bar advertisement sign painting. And I was doing a lot of, uh, of like, flyers for shows, show posters and stuff. And that led to doing record covers, which uh, about five years into my career, my career, my 21 year career, um, that led me to uh, meet the band Metallica. Very who, nice. Uh, asked me to do a bunch of murals in their studio, and um, that led to a whole bunch of like painting guitars and and just kind of generally like you know working for the band for the last you know 15 years or so, uh, on and off, you know, um, as like sort of their, one of their kind of go to artists. So that was pretty cool. Um, I've worked with a lot of companies like. Uh, Vans, uh, Dunlop Guitar Picks, uh, Stern Pinball, um, Creature Skateboards. I worked with a lot of skateboard companies. Um, it's just been a, like a kind of a, like a like a real fun sort of a, I don't know pop culture um, journey, if you will. Yeah, for me. I got to work with a lot of my childhood heroes. You know, pretty pretty cool. Absolutely. I mean, you know, some of the things that just pointing out, obviously, the artwork on Cosmic Carnival is 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 beyond amazing actually for what you've done so i mean a, a little bit more about that i mean you know what what was your influence on Car cosmic carnival uh for me um you know talking to the guys uh talking to john at a uh, suncoast you know they came they had the theme uh cosmic carnival and you know i immediately was thinking i'm a huge fan of like you know like uh, old heavy metal magazines and like retro sci-fi uh so I was I was thinking, man, I could give this a real like kind of vintage uh, retro sci-fi twist. Yeah. And um, um, it just it it, it just uh, kind of allowed the doors to open up, and and they gave me a lot of creative freedom with the characters that they had developed. Um, you know, they had some lists and a lot of ideas, and uh, but uh, um, when I designed them, I got a lot of creative freedom, which is really cool, and uh, they're really cool to work with. So it was a, like a really fun project. The game was already uh, had already been, you know, mostly designed by the time that I got there. Um, so that you know, the a lot of the templates were in place for me to put artwork into, um, and uh, you know, I got to help out on the animation a lot too. I got to draw, you know, uh, a lot of the animation. So uh, that was really cool, you know, to be involved in that. Very nice. I didn't so you, animation, but I, I was involved in the animation. Yeah. Did you, so you did the actual cabinet artwork as well as the play field, and 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 yeah. then also had correspondence into the D and D and the visuals as far as the LCD screen and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I had them put in, you know, the uh, worked on the, their their sculptor with, with the toys and um, worked on their animator with the animation and stuff. Um, so I got to draw like um, a back and forth with the animator. Uh, I got to draw a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, I got to draw uh, uh, a lot of the characters and kind of do turnarounds and just sort of like come up with new stuff. You know, it wasn't just pulled from it wasn't just pulled from my art package. You know, it's yeah, kind of so it's pretty cool. I think you're feeling kind of a demand of what's, you know, a lot of people ask for, you know, just 
just machines with original artwork, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's it, it, on Penn side, everywhere you go in the pinball community, they're talking about, you know, machines that have Photoshopping and stuff like that. It always gets brought up. But one thing that I can say about Cosmic Carnival, and this is true across the board from all the people that we've been talking to at this point, is that the artwork is very unique and it's almost got a vibe to it. It's got a lot of energy going behind it with the colorations, the play field art and everything else that's going on. And I was doing a little bit of research uh, the other day and I noticed that you had quite a few, you have a lot of influences on Wikipedia as far as your artwork. And you can tell from Ed Roth and all these other guys that are actually your influencers, how that actually correlates into your artwork. So, I mean, with that being said, when you came into this project, what, 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 what was the key thing that brought you into Suncoast and Cosmic Carnival in regard to, I want to work on this project? Um, I, I liked the, I liked the theme that they came up with. I liked that they came up with the original theme and it was just really, I had always wanted to do like, like, a, like just come up with something, you know, and, and yeah. make, make my own you know thing. And, and they came up with the idea and I'm like, that's a great idea. Let's, let's, let's roll with this. You know, I'm, I've done a lot of licensed stuff, which is, you know, it's cool on its own, right? It's rad to get to work with these, uh, you know, like, like uh, whether it be a big, like whatever a movie or, or a band for, in my case. Um, I mean, that's really cool. It's a different thing. And, and I've done a bunch of that, but it's nice to kind of do this like original theme stuff. And I'm a big fan of original theme pinball, like um, from the seventies and then specifically the eighties. Um, there's just a whole list of like, I mean, most of the ones from back in the day were made up titles, you know? Oh yeah. And it's just a part of pinball. Like it's, it's uh, I mean, licensing is cool too, but I really dug that they're making up their own theme and uh, to get to be a part of that and to get like to, um, you know, have like a lot of creative freedom. It was really, really, really special, you know? Um, so that was a big thing for me, you know, it was a big thing for me. Well, you could tell the influences. I mean, you know, everything that's in that machine, it, 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 it's very smooth from what we've seen. I mean, even from posts that we've been doing and talking about the machine in general, People are talking about how it flows very well. The play field flows, the artwork complements completely, the soundtrack complements uh, completely as far as that pinball machine. And, and with that said, I mean, the influences of what you have on there, you can tell from everything from a little bit of graffiti to just the way that you do it. You know, I mean, it looks beautiful. The colorations of purple and blacks and so forth just draw you into that kind of environment. Uh, but with mm -hmm. that, I mean, the story does too, you know. It just yeah. really does. Your artwork actually is like the first thing that people see. And I tell you, it draws you in almost immediately. It drew me in personally. Uh, yeah. You know, what, what, you know, talking about art and Dirty Donnie, I mean, obviously you've been doing art for a long time. I mean, you know, I love asking these questions uh, of, of what got you into art specifically. I mean, what was that driving force that got you into this in the first place? Well, when I was a kid, my, my, my mom would always have a pen and a paper in her purse. And so like, uh, you know, say my dad was at work and we'd, you know, we go, we have to travel somewhere or whatever we, you know, I'd be drawing and stuff when, you know, we'd go out somewhere and I was bored, like she'd give me a pad and paper and I just always drew. And, um, um, I was always like really fascinated with pop culture. Like when I was a kid, just, just like Saturday morning cartoons, uh, toys, um, a lot of toys that the big kids had that, that they wouldn't sell anymore in the stores, like the Godzilla's, like that was a little before my time and the yeah. big gym and the, um, um, $6 million man toys. Like it was just a little tiny bit before my time. And like, I'm coming into the era of like Star Wars figures and, and then, and then, and then the eighties, like GI Joe, Transformers, you know, all, all, uh, He-Man, all that good stuff. Um, so as a kid, I just, I'd always look at the box art and, you know, just always wonder like who did that, you know, and then record covers, you know, I'd get into you know, record covers like Iron Maiden and, and then like, you know, just getting into punk rock and, and metal and stuff and just seeing all these amazing drawings and paintings and I was wondering like, who did this and, you know, kind of thing. And I never, you know, really, really thought that I would be one day the guy that did that. And, you know, um, it's just cool to be a part of that, you know, to, to get to do all this kind of cool stuff, you know, and just, I mean, I had influences as a kid, like, uh, you know, Jack Kirby, you know, comic book art and, uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Moibus and, uh, I uh, did a lot of stuff for heavy metal, amazing artist, And, you know, um, like big, big daddy Roth's whole like art direction, the rat Fink and the model kits and all the people that got to work for Roth studios, uh, uh, Robert Williams. And, um, you know, just, just as you go on, you know, like Derek Riggs from Iron Maiden, Puss said from Metallica, uh, I mean, it just goes on and on, you know, I just take it, like, I get my influence from, like, whatever I'm into at the time and, and, and all the stuff I've experienced throughout my life, you know, and it kind of, I guess it kind of shows in my art, you know, I'm able to sort of, like, put it all in there, one that gives it its own style, in a way, so. It is definitely unique. That That's, that's a great answer, because realistically, there's nothing like it. I mean, if you look at... <laughs> 
definitely weak. Did you see the Game of Thrones? Have you seen the Game of Thrones? I, I have heard all about the ending. <laughs> I actually have not gotten myself to watch it yet from what everyone has said. I've been so busy, but I almost don't know if I want to or not from the feedback I've seen about it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop. Stop looking around. All right. <laughs> So, I mean, you know, with your artwork, obviously, it took you out of one area into another. And now the pinball community, obviously, has been ob very welcoming of your work. It is very original. It is. Pinball. There you go. Pinball. <laughs> pinball wizard right there. <laughs> pinball has been a, a really great thing. I mean, you know, as a kid, we were probably all into arcade machines and, you know, skateboarding yep. and all that. And, and then uh, pinball, of course, you know, was, was around. And I, I – got into pinball in uh i would say the mid 90s a friend of mine gave me a, a machine he gave me um, a mars trek and i had that in my apartment in montreal for it's probably about five years until i moved to california and i, I gave it to my friend i passed it on but um i've always kind of had like a pinball machine around and when i moved to california i started to uh, uh collect them more i'm not a, i don't have a lot of machines i'm i'm, I'm not i'm that guy that'll have four or five games uh maybe some four or five pinballs and a few arcade games, and I'll swap them around. So yeah. I bring a new one in, and I let another one go. But we have a little more space out here, so who knows? But um, yeah, I've been going to sh pinball shows and conventions for uh, for years. So it's really like I knew I I know the pinball player, I know the people, I know the community. Um, and when I got into it, I mean, no one was really doing art for it. There was no like it was it kind of like pinball had kind of done this, you know? Exactly. And, and when it kind of was started to come back, it was like the era of Photoshop for all the movie companies and, and all the big, big companies, like we're just, it's cheap, it's fast Photoshop, you know, and that's what they wanted. And like, I just hadn't seen any pinball artwork, you know, and, and I started, I did a custom uh, game for the band, the helicopters. Uh, it, it was a record cover. I did. did that with uh, Wade Krause and with, with uh, Tanya Kleiss. And we got to retheme it. And uh, it was so much fun to do this one game with like, you know, hand drawn art and stuff do it old school uh after that um i showed that to james Hetfield from metallica he saw the metallica or he sorry he, he saw that game and was like can you make a metallica game yeah so we got together we made this one-off metallica machine um i believe it was out of a out of an earth shaker and uh you know uh tanya programmed it with music and said they said that that couldn't be done and um and this is pre-acdc you know so this is like the first game that like had interactive music on it from from my knowledge you know and uh and uh, the, the powers that be took note, um, you know, it's Tanya got hired by Stern. And, and uh, then I got the Metallica gig to do the Metallica pinball, which was an amazing, like, you know, uh, my first production game, you know. Um, yeah. Metallica yeah. was like, you know, we want Donnie to do the art. And Stern was like, we've been wanting to work with Donnie, you know, like we, we love his the stuff he does in the community, you know, his artwork. And, um, and it's different from what's going on. So uh, they, we came to, we, all, all of us came together on this game. And, uh, um, you know, it, it became like a, I don't know, like a really good seller and, and people loved it and uh, the band loved it. Um, Stern loved it. So, you know, the hand-drawn artwork was the first one for hand-drawn artwork in years, I think, you know, yeah. actually like, ink on paper. Like I do like ink, like I, I don't have my stuff here, but I, um, I do like brush on paper. So it's all hand-drawn. Oh, wow. I would love it. I've seen some of your uh, Donnie TV segments in regards to how you actually put this stuff together, even on metal and stuff. You have it kind of, you know, laid out a certain way. Uh, but obviously that's what gives your art such a dimension. And, you know, just kind of bringing up just stats here. I mean, if you look on penside.com, right, and you look up the top 10 or top 20 games that are on there, Metallic is like easily top 10. And it's yeah. because of the art package, the sound package, the play package as far as the shots, the play field. And that all had a lot to do with you. And so obviously with Suncoast and a lot, obviously with Cosmic Carnival, I mean, the package already is speaking to the people. Trust me. I mean, the artwork is laid out. It looks beautiful. I mean, this thing is almost like a collector cabinet. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. I want to make something that I would want, you know, like when I do, when I do stuff that I'm passionate about, I, I, I all my art, like every time I do a piece, I'm, you know, it's, it's, I've been fortunate enough to work with uh, on really cool projects. So I'm usually 99% of the time, very passionate about what I'm doing. Um, but I like to make something that I would want to have in my home or something that I would buy or something that I would need to have, you know? Um, so that's what I, that's what I go for. And, and with pinball, I just, I know what most of uh, the pinheads want. Yeah. Uh, Cause I am one, you know? So, and I, and I hang out with them all the time and I, I go to all the shows and I just, you know, kind of kind of know so thank you though thank you um i, I worked really hard on it and it's, I, I do hope that it's nice to hear and i do hope that people dig it and they like yeah. it 
It's beautiful. I try to put a lot of stuff in there. I try to get in the, in the play field and put a lot of a lot of little things in there. That's another thing. I, I like busy play fields, like like they used to do. You know, like like all the guys used to do. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it literally is a work of art. I almost feel like it's going to be one of those cabinets that goes down in history. As I mean, it's it's Suncoast's first game, right? Rolling off the lines and the way that this game is set up is just like top 10 already right off the line. I mean, the only thing that we need that all of us, as far as me, I'm a reviewer too. The only thing we're looking for is shot lay, as far as the shots and the layouts as well. And I think that from what I've seen, it looks like it's got that going, but you know, it's, 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 it's artfully put together. Um, you know, that said, I mean, obviously your transition into pinball, I mean, you know, how, how was that? I mean, you went from doing art in a completely separate kind of like way to going into pinball art with Metallica, I mean, did that change the way that you do art? Has that influenced you to, to and, and influence your art from prior to make it even more to elevate it to the next level? Um, yeah, well, you know, because I'm so passionate about pinball, like, I was really stoked to get to do a pinball machine, and then, you know, to 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 get the uh, Aerosmith game was really cool. You yeah, know, it's and, a beautiful and, game uh, too. It's all a challenge. Doing a pinball is like a real big challenge. It's for me, it's it's similar to, to doing like when an artist would do their own art show. Yeah, like you have like twenty or thirty paintings that you have to get done in a period of time. Say, let's say like five months or four months, and so uh, um, you're under the gun to do this uh, the best art you have ever done, and that's what you know how I look at it. Um, so it's it's really it pushes you and it's it's exciting. You know, it's really cool. And you know, the challenge with Aerosmith was like you know like how okay they've got no artwork, um, they've got a lot of uh, um, logos and a lot of photographs and stuff, but how how are we gonna do this? How how am I gonna give Aerosmith? How am I gonna I want to make them look cool. So I want to make it look like if you don't like Aerosmith, you still want to buy this game. You know, if you don't like the band, you still want to play the game. If, you know, if you've never heard of them, you, you are interested in checking out this game, you know? So, um, I think I, you know, stepped up to the plate with that one and people seem to like the art. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Um, I didn't do the animation on that. I was taken from uh, my style or my, um, my art package, which is totally like the plan. It was part of the plan. Um, and it was a lot, that was a lot of fun to work on. That was a really cool game. Um, Got to work a lot with John Borg and uh, uh, Greg Ferrez. Um, so then uh, uh, what followed that was was Can Crusher. And I was so tired after Aerosmith. And then they're like, here's Can Crusher. <laughs> got Can Crusher right away. And uh, with Paps, they were like, uh, they're like, we just, we want like a, par a party at the Moon Tower kind of theme. And we want a van in there. And like, we want like Red Fang, the band, to be playing. I'm like, man, I, I hang out. At, I know these people too. You know, I go to yeah. you know, shows all the time. And I, you know, I got my, I have a custom van. And, not anymore. I sold it, but um, at the time I had my van, so I put my van in the party. I put a couple of, uh, I put a bike in a car and a, people partying. I was like, I just, I so got this, you know, like, yeah. kind of, I got it. So um, it was a lot of fun, and, and they they loved it. So that was really cool. And then, uh, and then, um, you know, I got the offer to use uh, uh, Cosmic Carnival um, with another company, which is, is super cool. You know, Stern's got a lot of people working for them, a lot of artists. So you know, I told them I'm going to do this other game. They're like, yeah, it's totally cool, you know, um, and um, the cool thing about uh, about uh, Suncoast is uh, for me too that it was their first game and they were so enthusiastic and um, you know they they have it they have um, just talking to them a bunch they have the means to to produce a game and uh, put it out so uh, they have a lot of confidence you know that that this was going to happen um, you know I wouldn't want to jump on board with uh, and put all this work into something that would never see the light of day exactly which happens. that happens and uh, it sucks for an artist to put um, to spend. A ton of time on something and it doesn't come out yeah so uh um yeah they're very confident about it and uh man it's just like you know i just finished the art like i don't know last month so the game's coming out in june yeah we just saw you i mean uh the the leader on the left side uh ramp you were you put a post out on that on youtube obviously painting the eyes kind of electric uh oh, yellow yeah. and the top hat and all that stuff as far as that 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 ramp shot to the left yeah, and, uh, it's coming together because originally the the images that came out they were they were white kind of like mocked up, and obviously you're putting the paint to it and 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 making it oh, yeah. match that that play field. Yeah, and we're talking like this is like the tail end of the whole project, you know. So uh, the painting that I did, um, I I did some painting. I, I painted a lot of toys, as you guys know. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of Sparky toys. I did some custom Metallica games. Um, uh, I custom painted toys for people, and um, yeah, basically I I just I wanted to show them how I would paint the toys um after the sculpts were done and uh do i did a little video for them and um so uh whoever's painting it they'll they'll know like you know how to make it look like 
you know, Mwah! <laughs> instead of just like, you know, I don't know, like a dog toy or something like, yeah, I want it to look a little classier. Well, I can tell you, I mean, when you walk up to a dirty Donnie pinball machine, you know it's Dirty Donnie's pinball machine as far as the artwork. I can only tell you. You walk up and you know it almost immediately. It's like walking into an art museum and looking at a Van Gogh and saying, that is a Van Gogh. You know, yeah. it's very definitive. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you took the opportunity with Suncoast because, I mean, obviously having the creative control, I mean, look at the machine. I mean, this thing is beautiful. Thank you. Like, Thank you. It, it really lot. is. It, it, it's drawing the people in. And, you know, that that's really what it's about. But, uh, you know, with that being said, I mean, obviously with the interview, um, I wanted to ask you a couple other questions real quick. And then, of course, you know, we can talk about where people could find not only Cosmic Carnival, but you. But uh, we heard through the rumor mill a little bit. Are you going to do another game with Suncoast? Is, it, is, is this going to happen? There's a there's a possibility. Um, probably have more information later. There's a, <laughs> been a little bit of talk about maybe something. So. Uh, we'll see. Nothing signed. I'm not signed yet, but, um, well, yeah, we'll, we'll obviously we'll the success of this machine, I mean, the way it looks, the way it plays, it's going to have a lot to do with that. But I tell you what, I mean, the way it looks now, people in the public from, from arcade pinball talk to other forms that are out there in other groups are talking about this machine. And I mean, it definitely has the buzz factor right now. So that's cool. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Yeah, it, it really is. It's, your hard work's paying off. You deserve it, man. In all seriousness, you truly do. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. It was really cool getting, I mean, again, back to the Metallica thing, like, you know, being the kind of like, um, you know, after the sort of period of really nothing, being the kind of first guy in again, yeah. like, I mean, they had, I mean, people used to do the art for it, right? But being like that much time went by and, and kind of like being the first guy in was, was, was really cool um, in a sense. I mean, it was a dream come true. And uh, also like opening the doors for other artists and, uh, uh, to come in um, and do do their work on games. It's like um, the real kind of uh, uh, reward for me inside is that that we're seeing a lot more games and I don't take, you know, credit for that, but like putting artwork on games and the fact that people like that, we're seeing better games now. We're seeing yeah, better yeah. artwork, you know. Um, we're seeing more artists being hired than, you know, fo Photoshop, you know, kind of in-house. Um, um, it's a piece of art. It needs to be part of the, you know, there's the programming and design, you know, um, um, and there's the, the artist, you know, and, and it needs to be a part of that. It's part of the soul of pinball, you know. So it's it's nice to see, like, other artists coming into the game, too. And, and we're just seeing prettier machines, you know. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, every, every, there's the, the other kind of formats that are out there from, you know, This Week in Pinball, Straight Down the Middle, all these other formats that are out there. I mean, we talk about artwork. There's yeah. a reason for it. I mean, it. I mean, if we're talking about it, that's what the masses want to want to hear about. They want to hear about... They want to hear about the artwork. They want to hear about the sound package. They want to hear about the play, the gameplay, their experience with it, how fun it was through other people. And, you know, that's what it's about. And I think the art is the first thing you see. It's almost like, I mean, in, in, in an interview, it's the, the starting phrase of something, right? It's like you see it and you're like, man, do I want to play it? The artwork has everything to do with that beyond the sound. And, yeah. so, you know, you executed on it val valiantly, being truthful and honest. I can't wait to get the opportunity to play the machine. Uh, where can where can all your followers, where can all the people that are interested in in this machine uh, find Cosmic Carnival at this point? Uh, you, you can put a link below, but at the uh, at, at the Suncoast website, yep. Suncoast, um, um, you'll have to kind of put a link below, maybe. Okay. And, um, I think I believe it's SuncoastPinball.com. dot com. Yep. And uh, DirtyDonnie.com has got links for everything. It's got um, links to my YouTube channel, Wonderful. Donnie TV. Donnie TV, <laughs> and um, uh, it's, yeah, it's got my website, my Instagram, uh, my Facebook, all that. Um, so right now, I my name is I've good. actually, I've watched probably 12 to 14 episodes of it already, and I love kind of watching, you know, the parties in the hotel rooms, and I mean, it literally is a day in the life of Donnie, like in all seriousness, but it's cool from you doing kebabs on your front doorstep to, to yeah. whatever, <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's really cool. I've actually been entranced by it. So I definitely, I, I listen to it whenever I'm working, almost like a podcast, being truthfully honest. It's it's very cool. So, and then oh, you cool. also have a website too. Was it Dirty Donnie, uh, DirtyDonnie.com? Yeah, it's DirtyDonnie.com. Yeah, it's, everything is there. It's all the links. Uh, it's okay. my portfolio, my, you know, my current, uh, uh, my schedules and stuff like that. So um, um, I'm still, I have to update the schedule. So it'll be uh, shows I'm doing this year, but uh, it all's coming down the pipe. 
But uh, yeah, the YouTube channel has been a lot of fun. It's been, it's been um, like a cool like thing to do while I'm on the road. I travel a lot for work. Um, so I'm on the road and I'm, I'm able to edit on the road and film and shoot. And I usually come up with a video. Uh, it's been a fun vlog, you know, it's got um, kind of everything. Yeah. Dirty Donnie, um, you know, featuring my art sometimes. Yeah. So it's been fun. Yeah. We do poster giveaways each week too. I say we, me, me and the editor, me, the, you do it all. Me, the <laughs> filmer. <Yeah. laughs> so I try to do poster giveaways whenever we do a new one. Steve Caballero is on the next one. So the skater, Steve Caballero. Very He's nice. Donnie TV should, that should be out. I'm going to, I'm going to edit that this week and it should be out next week. So. I will watch that. I'm an avid uh, ex-skateboarder, skateboarded as we talked about for about 14 years and and so forth. So I'm a huge skateboarding fan. So there you go. This is another guy, Jim Phillips. Uh, this is another uh, one of my um, influences and, and a buddy of mine. So good old school skateboarding art. Super have, cool. Have you noticed the community is so similar? Skateboarding, pinball, arcade. I mean, it all it all kind of meshes together in one format. It's so ironic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, you know, today we definitely, I mean, literally, absolutely thank you for your time. Uh, I did hear that you just got married recently. I did. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Jenny Gillies. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Uh, you. you know, we're truly excited for you guys. And then of course, you know, thank you for taking the time, not only for yourself, but Suncoast Pinball, uh, to allow us the opportunity to have this exclusive interview with you. Uh, you know, we thank all our viewers, right? I mean, go to Dirty Donnie TV, uh, you know, check out Arcade and Pinball Talk. Obviously, we both have YouTube channels. There's always a red subscribe button down below. Please click them both. Uh, yes. And uh, come to your channel, subscribe, uh, win a poster, watch some, uh, watch some of my cr my crappy TV show. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we definitely thank you for your time today, and uh, we look forward to obviously other machines and other conversations and, and talk around pinball. Right on. Well, you can only hope, I can only hope that there'll be another one. You never know. Um, but uh, I'd love to work with Suncoast again and uh, they're great to work with. Oh, definitely. Thank you again.